and we're back. I am back. I am sorry for my absence and the lack of content. I have been doing work and family things. I've been 14 hours at the coast, being silly. I've been silly and having magic withdrawals the whole time. So I'm back to say sorry and give you this gift, this amazing gift. It's the most fun I've had on MTG yet. It is three color red devotion. Let's check it out. So three color red devotion. What the hell, man? What the hell? I know. So enigmatic incarnation told me to do it. This is a bonkers build for this card. So the idea with this is you sacrifice an enchantment from the two drop. You dig up a creature from the three drop. Sacrifice an enchantment from the three drop. Dig up a creature from the four drop. So that's how we get our red devotion online. So what we're really pushing for is early game we're using omen and lava coil to stay alive and then omen of the sea for our you know digging in for the colors and for our incarnation in the first place and then our mischievous chimera is going to be an early game evasive attacker but also semi-decent blocker but if we cast an omen in their um opponent's turn it's going to do one damage to them and then we get a scry so it can help us sort of smooth out our draws as well so then when we get to turn three we're dropping things like our naiad or our annex naiad's going to make our omens one drops when we cast them in the opponent's turn which really goes good with the chimera really quite well the annex is um, an amazing piece obviously we're trying to get the red devotion but annex works crazy with this combination um, our uro obviously is going to draw us a card gain us three life and we can play an extra land but he has a little hidden attack later with our escape which i'll explain but moving on we're trying to dig up to our turn four so we can get our tectonic giants down and our torbran so the idea is Annex, Tectonic Giant and Torbran all together, which is very easy to actually happen in this deck. What's going to end up happening is the Tectonic Giant, you swing in and you choose to do 3 damage to face. And with the Torbran down, that's actually 5 damage to face. And then he's going to do 5 damage as well. So this is going to swing for 10 damage with the Torbran. And then if you have these 3 down, he's going to be a 7-3. That swings in for 9 damage. So as we start to sacrifice creatures, uh, creature enchantments to dig into our deck, it's going to leave behind one ones with our annex down, and those one ones will swing in for three three, you know, we'll swing in as three ones, I guess. So that's pretty solid. You know, it's a insane attack when you dropping things like Uro, Enigmatic, and uh, Incarnation, Omen of the Sea. The opponent is totally not expecting you to just pull this red devotion out of nowhere and just swing in with a, a 9 and a 10 and if you have a Perverse down and that's going to be online 100% then you're going to be swinging in for another 9 indestructible so that usually just wins you the game straight up. But the Perverus works in a really kind of cool way with giving everything haste, other creatures haste. When you cast an Uro for escape you're going to be able to you know swing in straight away with it and get two triggers from it so you're going to gain six life two card draw play two extra lands if you have them plus swing in with a six and it's very easy to have enough cards in the graveyard because we're sacrificing so much to this to dig into our deck that it's just it turns him straight on ready for his plan and you don't get anything back from the graveyard so you're not worried you just click away choose five done so that's the whole like brew around is this enigmatic carnation sort of just digging into the right pieces and then we can all of a sudden have this big red devotion attack. We have one dream shaper shaman because this whole incarnation happens at the end of your turn. You sacrifice the enchantment so you, you can't sort of play a creature and then sort of sacrifice it straight away by selecting it. You have to wait till the end of your turn. So I wanted to get extra value and the way that this guy works is at the beginning of your end step you can pay three and then you just reveal cards off the top of your library until you find a non-land permanent 
put that straight onto the battlefield. So you pay three for a lucky dip into your deck, and if you have an incarnation down as well, you're going to sacrifice and dig in for a, a creature of some sort. So you're getting two cards essentially at the end of your turn from your deck on top of whatever you've cast in that turn, and that just really helps you find what you need and just surprise them even more. And the Tectonic Giant also has a second option of exiling the top two cards of your library and until the end of your next turn you can play one of them, you get to choose one and play that. So when he is the target of a spell you get to choose one of these options or when he attacks which is insane because if you have a Purpurus down and you start digging a few of these out they swing with haste. And if you have this down, obviously, like we said before, you're swinging in with 10, 10 damage, and it's just stupid, but if you really need, you can start digging into your deck as well. So the other thing with the Torbrand is it's going to increase the damage of everything that's red, so our Chimera is included with that. So if we cast an Omen of the Forge, it's going to not only do 4 damage with the Torbrand to their face, then this is going to do three damage as well. So if we have in their turn a Chimera, Torbrand and an Omen in hand and we cast it, we're doing um, seven damage to their face and getting a scry. And that's in their turn. That's just stupid for two mana. So that whole idea is just big chunky things happening that they can't really do much about. So even Lava Core is going to be six and exile with a Torbrand. And like I said before, I just can't say it enough, it's very, very easy to have an Annex, Torbrand, a Tectonic Giant and a Purpurus all on the battlefield at the same time and then just bring out an Uro and swing in. I've, I've done that so many times in all of these matches that I just feel like it's, it works like clockwork, the, the combination of all of these. But yeah, that's pretty much the deck. I hope you've been enjoying these uh, the decks that I've been building. I've been trying to sort of keep up to date with all the other YouTube content creators. I'm big fans of them all and I'm trying to do something that they're not. So if I see a deck pop up, Mono Black Magic, I don't know how you do it. There's a, just a new video or two every day and some of them I have already built and put on my channel and I look at yours and I feel very, you know, like inspired. But I want to try and do different to everyone else and I think that this one definitely is not being seen. So. I really hope you're enjoying that, you know, extended uh, thought that I'm going into about trying to do something really unique and kind of weird. And that's that's how I like to play. When I play tabletop magic, I play the weird janky banks all the time and I don't really care about losing. I just have fun playing the game. So if you want to see a much more competitive version and you sort of want to tweak it, send me through the list and I'll, I'll have a go of it, see, if, see what, you, what you can come up with as well. But let me know in the comments if there's a card you want to see built around or if there's a, um, a deck you want to see me build. And even if you want to hit me up on the friends list and have a game online with me, I'm going to be doing live in the next couple of weeks as well. I'm still in the process of setting up my whole studio. I'm moving again. All this sort of stuff is just happening. So I do apologize for the lack of my content, but I promise and assure you that I am full-fledged swing into this and I'm going to be pumping out some really unique, fun decks in the next coming weeks. So hope you're enjoying. Stay tuned. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and hit me up in the comments. I want to hear from you guys. But let's get into the games. Enough gin flapping. Right? Enough gin flapping. All right. Greatness. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Turn one scry. I'm going to set up for a few things here. Don't want you yet. We're going to dig you out. We need land or an incarnation. Incarnation. Ooh, nothing. Nothing. So we've got a free turn. I think I am going to go for the green. And by free turn, I mean he hasn't put any threats down. Next turn, he's going to put something down, can't attack with it. So we've got a whole turn of not being worried. I mean, unless he drops a black. Looks at my hand of thought erasure. Okay. Now what is... 
incarnation. I think from here we'll go for the three life and some gains. Okay, so we missed the land. Lots of answers though. It could have been better to go with this. So we set up for that. If we draw any colour land now, we can drop this. Haven't you seen Uro before, buddy? Okay, so he's in Banishing Light territory or Counterspell territory. Okay, I'm just going to pass turn. Yep. Does he have a counter spell? Okay, so we don't really need the lands at the moment. And... I'm going to put this down. I feel like he's got a counter spell. Just so if he drops something next turn we can incarnation. Okay. And pass turn. I'm just playing around those counters because I don't want to put the incarnation down when he's got untapped mana. Okay. I don't think we need another one. So, we're still two mana away from this. Now we can go in. Unless he has a negate. And we'll drop this one. For Annex. Okay, so we're in a good position here. Okay, well we just dug it out of our deck. Okay, so again a life. And he knows we have it, so we might as well flash it. Counter spell? Yes, there it is. So we go and get another one.
and we'll get I think I think we could get a Uro so we got both Annex So we'll put the one in there as we have down. We'll go and get Tectonic Giant. Going shocking with my land selections. So he's down to one card, so this is good news for us. He's going to get a second here, but it's quite okay. What are you going to bounce? Oh, nothing. Alrighty, yeah. to combat. No attacks doesn't matter. And turn. And we'll go and get one of you. Okay. I'm surprised he didn't bounce my thing then. I think he's got a time wipe here. Mm-hmm. You got a time wipe yet? We'll be left with a bunch of dudes anyway. And we can't exactly... Hello? Buddy. It's already a long enough match. Um, no, I need something more than that. Okay, so I think we go down with this. Attack on to to ferry. Okay, and I think we could get another tectonic giant.
This is the Red Devotion showing off right here. Do you have a time wipe, man? I honestly think you have a time wipe. Okay, three damage. Just get some value. Okay. So it wasn't a time warp. So now we're set up with a monster attack. We'll get down another one with haste. Okay. Resolve. We'll go for five of these with haste. Yeah. Insane. Insane. Five damage to face. Okay. Oh. Beautiful. So you can see the red devotion going on, and then that Uro just takes them completely by surprise. Okay. So we'll go down with our tapped land. We set up for a dig, we got an answer, three drop, four drop. Beautiful. Um, not sure if I should get rid of him. I think I'm going to. Let's just save ourselves some some trouble. Okay. I reckon we bring this down. And we'll get the coves. Naiad of the Coves. I mean, he's good, but <clears throat> we want to kind of hold him for the right moment. So he could have a buff here. So that's pretty much why I put her out. There you go. Okay, so... I'm gonna go down with Torbran. Let's 
if he has an answer, he'll, we will get it out of his hand now. Still at 18, we're going to go for a dig next turn. But if he sticks around... Okay, so he's dumping out. Oh, that would be nice, wouldn't it? But well, instead, let's go and have a look for something useful. No. No attacks. Okay, so he's either got a buff or an answer. And then... There we go, so now he's going to get in for... Four? <laughs> And we're going to go Uro. Into the Annex. Okay, so no attacks. Okay. Is he going to tap? He may have a shock here. Cool. I think we could. He's got first strike. We can kill him and him. So that sets us up for an Uro next turn, if he kills both anyway. Okay, I think we go for our green. Our last green, our only green. Uh, we need one more in the graveyard to cast him. So we could go like that. He's only three, yeah. So we'll go like this. Oh, Newsdale double blue. Okay. Not tack in. Make him use this guy for his shamana. Okay. Yeah, so I was going to say, man, that's a pretty fair trade for me. Do we survive? Okay. Well, that's pretty nice. Wow. What a friggin' move that is. Incredible. Incredible. Alright. So, we'll keep this. Okay. Still think we go in with the Fable Passage for the red. Although we should get the green. I feel like we need the green.
I've only got one green in the deck, and if I get the incarnation, I need to be able to cast it. We've got blue, we've got red, we've got green. So we just need one more land for incarnation. We can dig with this. We've also got an answer next turn, so there you go, that's nice. And there's our other land. Okay, so I think we just need to get rid of this guy. Go down with an annex. Well, we have a free turn here. Um, I'm going to put the annex down. So, does he have a blue on the counter spell? Is that why he's holding Fabled Passage up? Still a little bit concerned about this. What's he going to get? Why did he not do it? Uh oh. That's weird. Maybe that's why? So, depending on our draw, we will have a dig in, try and find our incarnation. Okay. If we get a red, we can put Torbrand down, which will be quite nice. That's why he was holding up the passage. I see now. Well, at least he's got two out of the way. Um... I think that would be pretty nice. And then we'll just go again. And that could be pretty good. We need our incarnation and I need that for a creature. No attacks. So we go down with our giant next. Okay. Still get a little 1-1, one, one, which is alright. Okay, that's exactly what we wanted. Yep. We go land, all attack. And then we'll get back. Possibly, I think we go for an Uro, get some life. Although it's still going to give him... only one life if we get Uro because of this so I think we get the annex interesting <coughs> didn't want to take me down to 11 That's weird. I know it's a good thing to do, but isn't that helping you? Okay. So 
So if he swings in, we'll block. Good. That's not what we wanted at all. Oh, man. Just can't catch a break. He's only got one card left, but we are at 12, which is what's not helping us at all. Okay. Well, I guess we can go and still have Okay, so in for combat. Okay, so now we'll just kill one off. Can we stabilize here? So that's him out of cards. I doubt he's going to swing in here. Beautiful. Exactly what we needed. Two life here. Seven all. What can he do here to stay alive? Nothing. Good game. Wow, that was amazing. 